Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in with Dr. Leisha the Preacher. This is a different type of message that I have today. In fact, this message is shared from an anonymous source. I'm aware of who this person is, but they want to remain anonymous. And they have given me full permission to share their work with whomever, especially those in the polyamorous community. If you're polyamorous or if you're considering a polyamorous lifestyle, this may be uh, good information, you know. So again, this is a sermon, a message from um, an anonymous source and they'd like to remain that way and that's fine so uh, the topic is shame and sin goes together shame and sin goes together and it says and there are uh, three major points um, under this um, title and the first point is labeled before the fall man and his wife were free from shame Genesis chapter 2 verse 25 the second point of this sermon is the fall of man brought shame to the man and his wife which is Genesis 3, 8 through 10. And then the final point is, the moment you obey man-made external agencies, shame enters. Genesis 3 and 11. Okay, all right. It's deep. Let's dig in. So the first uh, introductory um, paragraph here says, modern psychology says that shame is a learned behavior. Okay. That means when a child is born, he does not have shame. Okay. But the child learns shame as he grows older from his environment and parents. This is why we have different cultures, conditions, humans to feel shame in different circumstances. Okay? But the Bible says that shame is a byproduct of sin. All right now. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> now, point number one. Before the fall, man and his wife were free from shame. Genesis chapter 2.25 says that Adam and his wife were naked, but they did not feel shame. And the question is why? They were free from sin. They did not have anything to hide from each other. Poly life promises such an openness to every male and female. In poly life, love has no boundaries and there is nothing to hide from each other. I know the freedom my partner enjoys and he knows my freedom. This freedom does not presuppose any evil. Our mutual consent is not for cheating mutually, but enjoying the freedom love gives. There, the possibility to sin decreases and probably vanishes. Wow. The love stories of the different poly people 
stay open, naked, but does not invite shame to their spouses. Mm, okay. The second point, the fall of man brought shame to the man and his wife. Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Once Adam and Eve ate the fruit, the conditions changed. The devil, a third person, began to bring restriction to their freedom. Mm. Till then, they were free. But now the devil, another moral agency, began to decide their morality. They were not able to look at each other and face their creator. Poly Life gives a solution to this. You could look at each other and enjoy your freedom. It is not the purity, but sin that fears openness. Ah, sin is trying to compel you to hide from the poly life. Mm. Mm. Point number three, the moment you obey man-made external agencies, shame enters. Genesis 3 and 11. Here God is asking, who told you that you are naked? Adam confessed that he had eaten the fruit which God had forbidden. Many people live with the poly mindset, are forced to sacrifice their freedom because they are wondering what others would think. So instead of enjoying a free life of freedom, they start to cheat their partner. As many Conservatives follow Victorian ethics till today. Many turn their faces from the chances that happen in the world. But limit your world into you, your partners, and your God. You will fight the social pressure better. Well, thank you very much anonymous source for sharing this sermon, this message. Um, I've recently been teaching on and sharing these exact, exact scriptures um, during my tarot readings. During my tarot readings, I start off each reading with a scripture. And I started from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and I happen to be in chapter 3 now. <laughs> I'm in chapter 3 now and, um, and I'm covering a lot of this um, but I'm not putting a polyamorous uh, perspective on it. And so I do appreciate this polyamorous perspective and um, I look forward to as I continue to give readings to entertain these ideas and these concepts in this particular sermon. And I just want to encourage my listeners to click on like and subscribe and please don't be shy to donate. I receive donations and my cash app and paypal information is in the description very easy to um, utilize very easy way to donate and also to keep a uh, record for yourself all right so i want to continue to share other people's polyamorous work sermons and messages so if you have anything you want to share 
please contact me just as this person did. They contact me, said, hey, I have this. I want to share it. Um, you know, just don't mention me kind of thing. And that's fine. I can do that. I'd love to. Because this isn't just about me. It's about all of us. We're all in this together. We're all in this on this journey together so that we can meet the Lord one day face to face I don't know how face to face it'll be but you know we'll meet our creator one day you know after this experience that we're currently in this natural experience this earthly experience so anyway, I just want to say thank you to um, the person who shared. And I want to say thank you to those who allowed me to share it with you. And I appreciate you listening. Dr. Leisha the Preacher is here to serve us all. To serve us all, one way or another. You have to let me know what works for you. Yes. May, leave comments in the... Um, comment section below I'd like to hear from you guys you know I like it when you click like and I also like comments too let me know how you're thinking what you think about what I put out you know all right thank you and be blessed Mwah.